Hello and welcome from the congregations of Cluny and Monimusk, Echt and Midmar, Chemne and Kintor to our shared service for Good Friday. Medieval visitors to the Holy Land from Europe traced the steps of Jesus' final journey to the cross as part of their pilgrimage. As they followed the Via Sacra through Jerusalem, certain customary halting places or stations became associated with particular events in Jesus' final hours. During the 15th and 16th centuries, Franciscans began to build a series of outdoor shrines in Europe to duplicate their counterparts in the Holy Land. And in 1686, in answer to their petition, Pope Innocent XI granted to the Franciscans the right to erect stations within their churches. Over time, the number of stations on the Way of the Cross or Via Crucis grew to 14. As some of these had their origins in post-biblical Catholic traditions, the Stations of the Cross remained somewhat inaccessible to non-Catholic Christians. On Good Friday 1991, however, Pope John Paul II issued a set of ecumenical stations that are all based on the biblical record and will be familiar to all readers of the New Testament Gospels. The journey through the Stations of the Cross is intended to be unhurried and reflective. The Bible readings remind us of Jesus' passion and the reflections are intended to help us link his passion to the experiences of our own day and age. Please make use of the musical interludes to form your own prayers and feel free to pause the service at any point if you need more time for reflection. Welcome to our worship this Good Friday. God calls us together to worship him as we explore the Stations of the Cross. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Let us draw near to God.
God of power and mercy, in love you sent your Son that we might be cleansed of sin and live with you forever. Bless us as we gather to reflect on his suffering and death, that we may learn from his example the way we should go. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Matthew 25, 36 to 41. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee <clears throat> and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. While Jesus was experiencing his most intimate and painful conversation with his heavenly father, his disciples were too fatigued to share the moment with him. In today's busy world, there are many whose lives are so frantic and exhausting that they are often unable to be truly present with those whom they love in the moments that really matter. Jesus died that all of us may find our rest in him. Jesus gave his life for those who endure stress and tension in their daily lives. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Today I'll be reading from Mark chapter 14, verses 43 to 46. Then, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. How painful it was for Jesus to be betrayed by a friend, betrayed by a kiss, betrayed in intimacy. Too many families in our country know a similar pain of intimate betrayal. Infidelity, divorce and desertion leave many children without mothers and fathers and have ruined the hopes and dreams of countless individuals of finding lasting love and trust in a faithful partner. Jesus gave his life for those who have suffered betrayal by those whom they love. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, 
both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. In the end, Jesus was condemned, not on the basis of legal evidence, but on the basis of trumped up charges brought against him by enemies who had power and influence. We like to think that our modern liberal democracies protect the legal rights of all their citizens. Yet despite ambitious legal theories, many of the poorest and weakest are prevented from accessing meaningful justice, even in the world's most advanced countries. In all societies, the poor are denied their basic economic and political freedoms by those who have more money, more power and more knowledge than they do. Jesus gave his life for all who suffer injustice. Lord Jesus, help us to walk in your steps. Testament, the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 69 to 75. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. A little later the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them, even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken, Before the cock crows you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As blues singer Bessie Smith put it, nobody knows you when you're down and out. Despite promising his loyalty to Jesus, Peter quickly denied his Lord when things turned ugly. How many lonely individuals and marginalised groups are there in our country who have been turned away from every door because they are too poor, too old or too young, because they are foreigners or because their lifestyles are so different. Jesus gave his life for outsiders, the lonely and the marginalised. Lord Jesus, help us to walk in your steps. Mark chapter 15, verses 1 to 5 and verse 15. The chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. 
The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas and handed Jesus over to be crucified. Like many people in positions of power, Pilate was faced with a dilemma of conscience, pitting his personal integrity against political expedience. In the end, he chose to do what was popular, rather than what he felt was right. All people in positions of authority, whether in business, civic society or politics, face similar dilemmas from time to time. In our modern world, we have become all too familiar with stories of corrupt officials and businessmen. Yet, there are many in positions of authority who truly seek to act with justice and integrity in the face of complex ethical dilemmas. Jesus gave his life for leaders who carry heavy responsibilities for others. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly. Jesus suffered pain in his body and he suffered the humiliation that went along with that pain. Millions around the world suffer from all sorts of diseases, illness and medical conditions. Sometimes this suffering is self-inflicted. Sometimes it is inflicted by others. And sometimes it is simply a result of the general human condition of frailty and mortality. To make matters worse, many diseases also carry humiliating stigmas. This is especially true of the HIV AIDS pandemic. Jesus gave his life for all who suffer in pain, disease and humiliation. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. When the chief priests and the guards saw Jesus, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. They cried out, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to, to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. The final humiliation for Jesus after being condemned, beaten and mocked was that he was forced to work by carrying his own cross to the place of execution. Despite the fact that slavery has been outlawed for centuries, Far too many workers today are still expected to labour under conditions that effectively amount to a type of economic slavery. From human trafficking and illegal sweatshops that exploit illegal immigrants and the poor, to the drudgery of monotonous production lines, many people around the world work long hours without a sense of purpose or meaningful reward. Jesus gave his life for those who labour without meaning or reward. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps.
Chapter 15, verse 21. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Simon, a foreigner in the city, suddenly found himself press-ganged by the angry mob of locals. Wars, famine and extreme poverty forced many people unwillingly from their homelands to find refuge elsewhere. Many others willingly choose to seek a better life for their families in countries more affluent or politically stable than their own. Sadly, such migrants and refugees often encounter hostility and xenophobia in the local communities to which they move. Today, we think especially of those who have been displaced through war in Syria and Yemen and instability and famine in South Sudan, Somalia and Nigeria. Jesus gave his life for foreigners, strangers and refugees. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Chapter 23, verses 27 to 31. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breast that never nursed. At that time people will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? How far has a society fallen when its women are called upon to weep for their children and to call the barren blessed? While women in Scotland enjoy equal rights at law, in the workplace and in terms of franchise, all rights denied them in the past. There are many women elsewhere in the world who are not so lucky. Moreover, women and children are still the most common victims of domestic violence, sexual abuse and harassment, human trafficking and rape in all societies. Jesus gave his life for women and children who suffer abuse. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Jesus is crucified. Luke 23, verses 33 to 34. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. By the time the crucifixion happened, Things had gotten so out of hand that those who performed it were just carried along by events. So Jesus could pray, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How often are we just swept along by the mob into situations that, on reflection, reveal the very worst in human nature? Yet there are those who, from time to time, stand up to challenge the status quo and force us as communities and as society to question our actions. We think in particular today of those who challenge us about our responsibility towards the environment. 
Jesus gave his life to challenge the status quo. Lord Jesus, help us to walk in your steps. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have both been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has, this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The concept of a good thief sounds like a contradiction in terms. Yet here was a man who, even having been condemned, was willing to change. How many convicted prisoners long to change and be rehabilitated into society, yet the odds seem stacked against them. Within the prisons, they are enticed into still more crime, while outside, they are shunned by society. We think today of the prison chaplains and prison ministries that reach out to people in prisons and help them to become reintegrated into society when they leave prison. Jesus gave his life to set the prisoners free. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. John chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. As the eldest son, Jesus had a responsibility to care for his mother in her old age. Unable to do so himself, he placed the responsibility on his disciple. The elderly form one of the most vulnerable groups in our society. Diminished mobility, health concerns, and inadequate pension provisions leave many elderly people dependent on family and social services. Despite God's commandment that we should honour our fathers and our mothers, many elderly people find themselves lonely and forgotten by an increasingly busy and self-preoccupied world. We have a, a responsibility to care for all those who are vulnerable in our communities, the old and the very young, irrespective of whether they are family. Jesus gave his life for the vulnerable elderly and for children. Lord Jesus, help us to walk in your steps. It was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 
and when he had said this, he breathed his last. The completion of Jesus' incarnation was that he died the death that we will all die. We think about all those who die daily around the world. We think especially of those who die violent deaths as a result of war, violence and crime. We also think of those who die as a result of institutionalised violence, poverty, forced exile, famine and incurable diseases, all of which could be overcome if the political will existed to do so. Jesus gave his life for the victims of man's inhumanity to man. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Matthew chapter 27 verses 57 to 60 When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. Joseph of Amarithia did what he could to bring comfort to Jesus' friends and family by giving sacrificially from his wealth and by becoming personally involved in an act of compassion lying Christ's body in the tomb himself. Thankfully, we have many in Scotland who are willing to give sacrificially from their own wealth to ease the suffering of the poor, the marginalised and the ill. We give thanks to those who use their blessings to be a blessing to others. Jesus gave his life for others. Lord Jesus, help us walk in your steps. Let us now offer up our prayers for the world. Let us pray. If the cross tells us anything, O oh Lord, it is that you know and share in our suffering. You are with us and with all those who are victims of disease, of the violence or abuse of others, of our own ignorance, our foolishness, and our sin. Help us and restore us, O Lord, we pray. You are with us and with all those who inflict pain on others and on our world. Through our selfishness or greed, through our brokenness or anger, through our rigidity or need to be right. Help us and restore us, O Lord, we pray. You are with us and with all those who are fearful of threats. Threats to this world we call home, threats to our safety and survival, threats to our sense of community and togetherness as people. Help us and restore us, O Lord, we pray. And in the silence of our hearts, we lift up our prayers to you, Lord. Christ of the cross, see our need of your grace.
hear our prayer for your mercy and come to us again to help and restore because we cannot heal ourselves. And as a sign of our constant and unending need for you, we now join our voices in the prayer that you, Lord Jesus, have taught to us, praying together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Shall we close this service by saying together the words of the blessing? May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with us along the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out our hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open our hearts to love. May we see the face of Christ in all whom we meet, and may all whom we meet See the face of Christ in us. Amen. And can I just take this opportunity of thanking everyone who's taken part in our service today and also for the technical support that we received, especially from Jim putting it all together and from all the help from other people as we've compiled this service. I hope that you all have a wonderful Easter when it comes. Thank you.